In today's video, I'm gonna show you the best ways to edit your videos faster. These tips are the same ones that I use to make my workspace more efficient, so that way I'm motivated to get my videos done at a timely manner. So the first thing we're gonna cover in today's video is cleanliness. I know it's a small little thing to worry about, but trust me when it comes down to productivity and to get your edits done faster, you need to have a clean desk. Look at my desk, I just have a computer, my camera here is just for show, and a mouse, that's about it. And every now and then I'll have my small hard drive on the side here, but notice how my desk is not cluttered. That is an absolute must. This is something that I always look for and it helps me inspire myself on getting an edit done faster. All right, the next step is to make sure that you're recording in proxy file formats. And what are proxies? They're basically downscaled resolution versions of your videos that are shot, let's say in 4K. Now this is not something that you necessarily have to do in let's say Movavi Editor, but this is a setting in your camera if your camera supports this feature. Not all cameras support this, but if you have a camera like the Sony A7S III, for example, all you have to do is go within the menu and then turn on proxy recording. And immediately when you start loading your footage, you're gonna see multiple folders with the raw footage and with downscaled proxy files. And this will help your computer process those files so that way you can edit faster without your computer struggling. The next step is also very, very important and this is how you store and label your footage on your external hard drives or your internal hard drives. So for example, if we take a look at my screen right here on my computer, here is my SD card and if I want to transfer it over to my hard drive or SSD drive, I'm gonna go to my drive, I'm gonna create a new folder which is the date of the project. So for example, let's say today is January 18th I'm gonna open that folder. I'm gonna create a new folder with the name of the camera that I shot with. So for example, if I shot with my A7S III, I'm gonna put in A7S III, open that folder, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the footage that I have right into that folder. But that's basically the process. And if you do it this way, you will never lose track of your footage. Never, ever, ever. So. Definitely recommend it, and this is going to help you edit your videos faster. All right, so before we move on to the other steps, I do wanna give a big shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes on topics including filmmaking, photography, illustration, design, and even more. Skillshare is a place where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in your creativity. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking to yourself, hmm, how do I increase my productivity? That's why I recommend you check out this class called Productivity for Creatives, Build a System that Brings Out Your Best by Thomas Frank. When I think about productivity on a personal basis, for me, I'm really kind of a systems builder. I don't like to be a machine just- Thomas right. Frank isn't just a productivity expert, he's also an artist infusing his video projects with cinematic shots and creating his own music on the side. Through years of working as an independent creator, he's learned that the same approach to productivity that works for regular tasks can also be helpful for doing more consistent and better creative work. So if you're looking to create YouTube videos on a regular basis, or if you just want to explore another creative hobby, definitely check out his class because I think it's pretty cool. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused on the things you like and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 subscribers who check out the link down below will get a free trial membership to Skillshare Premium. So what are you waiting for? Check out the link down below and start exploring your creativity. Now, after I transferred my footage from my camera to my hard drive, I usually like to look for music immediately. Surprisingly, looking for music takes the most amount of time in my projects. Usually when you're filming a project, you already know the theme of the video. So when you start getting ready to edit your video, you should start looking for that music because you have that theme in mind and now you need something that will support that theme. So there are multiple different websites that I like to use for royalty-free music. One of them is artlist.io 
and they have a ton of different royalty-free music tracks. They also have sound effects. So if you ever want to shoot a cinematic B-roll video or anything like that, then you can easily go to artlist.io, check out their sound effects, check out their royalty-free music, and overall they have very good quality content. Now, if Artlist.io doesn't have the music or sound effects that you want, there's another great website called EpidemicSound.com. This is another site that I like to use, and it also has that royalty-free music and sound effects. However, compared to Artlist, Epidemic Sound is only tailored for those who have a YouTube channel, and Artlist.io is more lenient towards using their music for commercial work and client work. Epidemic Sound, however, is meant solely for you and you alone. Otherwise, you're going to probably have to get that commercial license, which is more expensive. So now let's jump into Movavi Editor and let me show you some things I do when editing that makes the whole process faster. So I have my project here. I have some of my files loaded into the browser. And by the way, some of my footage might look a little bit strange and stretched out. This is actually shot with an anamorphic lens actually this lens right here. So the footage is gonna look like it's kind of squeezed. So I apologize if it looks a little bit distorted, but that's the reason behind that. But anyway, here's my footage. So for example, I'm gonna choose just a, a random clip, maybe right here. I'm gonna drag and drop it into my timeline. And when I'm learning a brand new software or if I'm editing in a software in general, one of the first things I like to do is look for keyboard shortcuts. Those are the things that are gonna make your editing process so much faster. So for example, if I want to make a trim or a cut on this clip, I'm gonna go over to the scissors icon, and if you hover your mouse over it, you're gonna see the keyboard shortcut. So on Mac, it's going to be Command B, and boom, we cut the footage. So now we can just reposition, replace, or just trim the clips as we wish. All right, so this brings me to the next little editing trick that I love to use in Movavi, and this helps me edit a lot faster, and that is using empty spaces. So for example, if I go to my timeline properties right here and I click on this arrow button, you're gonna see a slash appear across it. That means that I can drag my clips anywhere on the timeline and I will have an empty space. So for example, if there are times in my edit where I know a clip needs to go in between, let's say these two clips, I can create an empty space and keep editing the rest of my project and then come back to this empty space and fill it up with any clips that I need. Now the next tip I love to follow is to have an intro middle point and conclusion or outro. This is the blueprint of every single project. So when you're editing, make sure it's clear that there's a solid intro, a middle point, and an outro. Without this blueprint, your clients or your viewers will be very confused. So while you're editing your projects, make sure you have that down to a T. And if you don't really know if your project has a solid blueprint, ask a friend to look it over and see what they think. If you look at my videos, I always tell my clients to do an intro and then an outro. The middle point seems to be very simple and straightforward, but it's so crucial, so crucial for you to have an intro and an outro. And last but not least is color correction. Now I know I made a video tutorial from a Vobby vlog a while back on color correction. By the way, if you haven't seen it, check it out right here. But I do wanna say this right now. Color correction should be saved to the last bit when you're video editing. That way your computer doesn't struggle while you're doing other things. So if you're color correcting first, your computer's gonna have an issue. But if you're color correcting last, then it's gonna make your editing process a lot more efficient. But there's one little other thing that I wanna talk about in Movavi Editor. So in my project here, with the clip selected, go to Color Adjustments, and then Magic Enhance, and then drag and drop it onto your clip, Movavi will automatically color correct your footage. And honestly, it looks pretty good. So for those of you who are new to color correcting, check out Magic Enhance in Movavi Editor because that's gonna help you a lot when you're editing your videos. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has helped you out. And if you haven't already, check out the link down below and try out Movavi Editor for yourself and let me know how it goes. All right, I'll see you in another video. Peace.